What's going on, YouTube? RDAP Dan here, Federal Prison Time Consulting. Hope you guys are having an amazing week so far. Today's Wednesday. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit about a company called Oaks of Justice and what they may or may not be able to do for your potential loved ones or yourself that are heading off to federal prison. Before we get started, we'll give everybody a few minutes to check in, give everybody a few minutes to subscribe, like, share. Also, don't forget to text the word YouTube to 76626. Put yourself on our notification text messaging list. This way, when we get ready to go live, you will also receive a text message letting you know we're getting ready to go live. If you haven't subs uh, subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and tap that subscribe button. Also, go ahead and press on the bell notification. That will turn on your notifications to make sure you also receive links directly through YouTube when we're getting ready to post any type of content, whether it be live or pre-recorded videos. How's everybody doing today? It's a very hot Wednesday here in South Florida. It's so awesome to be able to say South Florida versus Eastern Washington of uh, in Spokane. Very happy to be back in Florida. As you can see, I've definitely gotten quite a bit of sun. Actually got a little bit of sunburn the other day. We went out on the boat, did a little fishing, a little tubing, and we just went and sat in the water. It was really, really nice. Uh, we'll give you guys a few more moments to check in with us because this is probably going to be something a lot of you have questions about. Many of you may have already received information or emails from Oaks of Justice from a loved one in prison or somehow you got wind of them some other way. And I'm sure there's a lot of questions surrounding Oaks of Justice. I still have some questions myself, but I have done a lot of my own research. So we're going to see what I can figure out. Uh, spell an error, what's going on? Spell an error, you were here early checking in. If there was a prize for that, you would have won. Uh, Gary Stamper. Hey, Gary, welcome, welcome. It's a new name to me. Maybe you've been in the room before, maybe you haven't, but if this is your first time, welcome. And if I didn't welcome you last time, I'll do it this time. Nancy, pretty sure I've seen you from time to time popping in and out of the room. And yeah, I'm super excited to hang out with you guys here on this awesome Wednesday afternoon. My kids will be in town next week. They'll be here Tuesday for about a week and a half. We're going to go spend some time down in Key West. We're actually going to be in the Keys for the 4th of July. My children have never been to the Keys, and they are 19 and 17. So they're almost at that age where they can really enjoy the Keys for all that it has to offer. But we'll definitely be able to get out and uh, have fun on the boat, probably do some snorkeling, some jet skiing, you know, all those things that you can do in the Keys. And if anybody has any fun events that you should make me aware of from anywhere in the Keys, let me know because I would love to get some insight as to what I should do with my awesome children in the Keys. Adrian. Adrian Warren, welcome. D. Sylvia, how you doing? Appreciate you guys. All right, so today... Uh, hey, Tamara. Tamara, you're not jealous of the Keys. You get to spend all this crazy time in like Costa Rica and all other kind of exotic places. So I don't want to hear you're jealous. I'm jealous of your life and your entire family's life, to be truthfully honest. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Oaks of Justice. If anybody has any information on Oaks of Justice, if you've had any dealings with Oaks of Justice, if you filled out applications, um, if you've given them money, I would love to hear about that. From my understanding, they have taken... Uh, they have received no money from anybody yet for the applications that they've received. At some point, there's supposed to be roughly a $200 application fee that's to be submitted. And from my understanding directly from Oaks of Justice, as of now, they have not collected any money. So if anybody's watching this video, whether it be now, later, or sometime in the future, if you have any information on how you've had a correspondence with Oaks of Justice, I would love to hear about it just to match it up to what I have heard. Um, so Oaks of Justice, I'm going to give you a little summary, then we're going to dig into some of the research I have here and some of the screenshots and whatnot. So Oaks of Justice is, and again, I'm not here to advocate for them or against them. Um, everything that I'm stating here is of my own opinion, some research that I've done, and some basic fact finding that I could do on my own. So I'm not here to slander them and I'm not here to advocate for them. Uh, I do have an interest in possibly working with them if I can get a little deeper with what they got going on. It is something that I may be interested in because anybody would be interested in what they are claiming that they are going to be able to offer. So what they're claiming that they're able to possibly do is 
individuals that are serving a federal prison sentence or getting ready to get sentenced that are basically, I know their their ideal situation of who they're looking for is nonviolent offenders, uh, not nonviolent offenders, white collar criminal types, basically people that can return home and go to work. If you can qualify and you have a few years left on your sentence, I think they'll take people up to around 60 months. And again, don't quote me on this, you can do your own research. But if you have a loved one in prison that possibly has a 60 month or less sentence remaining, and they fit the criteria, basically a non-violent offender, white collar type of an individual, that's kind of a overall summary of what they're looking for. They have a work furlough program where basically your loved one can go directly to home confinement for the next several years. Instead of finishing their prison sentence, they can do this on home confinement. And Oaks of Justice is claiming to have a wristwatch device that's basically a GPS location monitoring device that is going to be attached to the inmate's hand or the wrist prior to them leaving the BOP. So somebody would have to come to like R&D, somebody from Oaks of Justice or a representative from Oaks of Justice would go to the uh, would go to the Bureau of Prisons of the location where your loved one is. They would meet them in R&D, go through all the criteria, strap a, basically a GPS monitor on their wrist, send them home to a work release program where they have to go to work. They would have some sort of a, a geo yard that they have to maintain a perimeter that they can't go out of. Maybe there's certain places they're not allowed to be near, like bars or who knows what it is. But they have an area that they got to maintain. And if they fit all this criteria, uh, there will be some kind of a, a fee, monthly fee, annual fee that they may have to pay. And again, I, I'm, I'm not up to depth on all of that. But it, from what they're telling me, they can take inmates out of prison and put them onto this program where they're still under the BOP, meaning they're still serving their BOP sentence, but they're doing it on a furlough type of a program where they're furloughing out of the prison and they're able to somehow do this for several years, basically serving the majority of their entire sentence on home confinement or on an ankle monitor where they have a geo location. So the questions I have is, is this actually going to happen and what's the process? So there's an application process that individuals need to fill out and usually you'll have like a point of contact on the outside. So if you're an individual with a loved one in prison, the person in prison has to sign something giving you, the loved one, the family member, the friend, whoever it's going to be, authorization to deal on their behalf to be able to fill out all this paperwork, be the, the go-to person. Uh, and my question is, has anybody actually spoken to Oaks of Justice? I know nobody's been released on the program yet. Now, I saw some emails go out from Oaks of Justice from a lady named uh, Joanne. And there's some emails that have gone out that they're expecting the program to launch any week, any month now. Um, there's some emails that went out hoping that the program was going to be launched in May or June. Now we're coming up on July. The program's not launched. And a lot of people have already filled out the applications. And the reason why I'm doing this video is I've received several hundred emails, phone calls, uh, not just myself, but other organizations and individuals like uh, Tom Root of Legal Lisa. I'm sure other consultants have probably received similar information. And they're being told that the applications have been submitted. So now I'm getting calls from inmates saying my application, the first round of applications has been submitted close to a thousand inmates. And a lot of these inmates are under the impression that their application has been submitted to get approved to be released out onto this program. So the more research I started doing, and I actually have had several con uh, conversations with Oaks of Justice directly, and we're gonna go into that in a second. And they kind of told me that this was pretty much a done deal as well. They were just waiting on some final approvals. But as I've done more and more research, come to find out, they, are drafting contracts <clears throat> and when they say they're drafting contracts for the BOP or Department of Justice whoever they're drafting them for they're drafting them internally uh, supposedly maybe an attorney they have or a legal department or they're drafting them themselves I'm not really sure who's drafting the contracts but they're only being drafted from their side they actually don't have any appointments from my understanding or any meeting set up with anybody yet that can actually make this finalized or even say, yes, we're interested in doing this. Um, from what I understand at this point, they have no contract with the BOP. Uh, the BOP has not seen a contract. The BOP is not entertaining the thought of a contract. Is the BOP interested in this? Maybe. 
I have not been able to validate that. So I'm not saying they are or they are not. I know that the BOP has reached out directly to Oaks of Justice. Uh, individuals from specific prisons have reached out directly to Oaks of Justice, asking them for more information to validate how they're going to be able to do this because according to some individuals within the BOP, they don't know anything about this. <clears throat> so it becomes interesting because all of these inmates, hundreds and hundreds of inmates, are under the impression that they may be getting out soon. And I'm not saying Oaks of Justice told them that. It could be a complete misconception from the inmate. Uh, they could have read the paperwork wrong. Inmate.com could have spread it throughout the prison. So I'm not saying that Oaks of Justice misled anybody intentionally. So my intentions of this video is to kind of clear the air a little bit. And let's show you a little bit of who Oaks of Justice is. So we're gonna to go to a share screen here, guys, okay? So let's... All right, so Oaks of Justice. Uh, system provides a constant, secure, state-of-the-art monitoring system to facilitate a safe and secure method of placing federal inmates who meet eligibility requirements to return home to work and pay restitution and other costs of their crime, as well as maintain social, economic, and psychological responsibilities to their families. All right, so let's go on to the next page here. And I know this is hard to read, so guys, feel free if you want to go to their website. And I, there's, I'm going to give you a description of all of their links. It's already in the description of this video. So feel free to go in and check out the links on Oaks of Justice to find out more information about them. Uh, Oaks of Justice will provide full, intense, 24-7, state-of-the-art security, including but not limited to... Uh, satellite monitored personal locator device a pld specifically designed for this purpose basically this is the device i was telling you about that they're going to strap to their wrist um, again after doing some more research i spoke to the company that's going to be assisting with the monitoring it's a company called um oh geez uh, buddy b-u-d-d-i and they're also in the description of this video uh there's a a company called Buddy, B-U-D-D-I, who is an out-of-the-country company who does have a location in the United States. I believe it's in Tampa. Um, a gentleman by the name of, uh, I believe his name is Mark, and I have all of his contact information. We're going to go review that in a second, too. Buddy is a monitoring location company. They actually develop a lot of the software and the hardware, and they're going to be actually providing the hardware to do the monitoring for the individuals. And then Oaks of Justice would be responsible for actually keeping in contact with the individuals. So it's like a two-way partnership here. And I have spoken directly with Buddy. Buddy is aware of Oaks of Justice. However, there is no there is no plan right now to how many people are going to be put on this program. Uh, Buddy is ready to produce the monitors once Oaks of Justice provides them with the inmates that would need to be put onto this GPS location monitoring system. But as of right now, there's no deal in sight. And Buddy did tell me that initially anybody that does get approved for this program in the future, it would not be a wrist monitor. It would actually be the typical ankle monitor, uh, which many of you have probably seen or even maybe some of you are on right now. So it would be more of a, uh, it is waterproof, D, correct. And Gary, you're right, it is waterproof. Um, <clears throat> so it would be an ankle monitor to start. However, Oaks of Justice told me that it was going to be a wrist monitor. Um, they were supposed to send me a prototype to be able to demonstrate and show you guys and never received it. Um, I don't know that they actually have them in hand. I've never seen one. I've seen pictures online, but it looks like just a picture off of the internet. So I don't know if they really exist or not. So I can't speak on that. However, um, this is the actual picture of what they're saying the device looks like. And if you guys want to take a screenshot of that, you can see there's an IME number on the back of that. There's a serial number. You're more than free to Google them, do your own research. And uh, D. Selvia is saying uh, they're not waterproof and you can't swim, shower, no swimming. It depends on the device. I had a device when I was in, uh, in the Federal Halfway House and it was by a company called Blue Tag. And I used to go in the jacuzzi with it and swimming. You just can't go deeper than like, I think, five or six feet. Um, so again, just if you are going to get on some kind of a location device, monitoring device, GPS location, tracking, tagging, whatever you want to call it, just make sure you do your homework and ask questions before you screw it up. But this supposedly is a picture of what their wristwatch is going to look like. And I have not yet seen an actual one, just pictures like this. So I don't know that they're actually in production. I don't know if there's an actual prototype. I've been told there is, but yet I haven't seen it. So I have to go for what it's worth. 
Um, these are some Q&A questions. And again, I apologize. I know the screen is tiny. Feel free to go to the Oaks of Justice website and read this for yourself or take a screenshot and zoom in. But basically it says, how much money does, or how much money goes to the Bureau of Prisons? Answer is none. <clears throat> what if I do not qualify? Your money will be returned 100%. Um, how are the applications submitted? All applications will be submitted electronically via email, and there's the email address where you would submit them. How long does the process take? It will take up to 30 days to process applications and schedule your RDAP to have PLD. Now, I don't know why they're saying it's gonna take 30 days to process. Uh, they haven't even gotten an approval yet from the BOP. An approval is, in my opinion, nowhere in sight. Nowhere in sight. They'll tell you different, uh, but I don't believe an approval is anywhere in sight, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. So you got to stay tuned because I do have some additional information that many of you are going to want to know. So there's a couple, you know, there's two pages of Q&A on here. Go through and read the Q&A at your own leisure. Uh, again, it's on the BOP's website, or it's on Oaks of Justice website. There's also a link in the description of this video. This is the Oaks of Justice. Uh, these are the members that are on the board. Um, these are the board members of Oaks of Justice. So you have from top left to right, you have a gentleman by the name of, I can barely read it, so small, Saprini, some last name. I Googled Saprini on, on, on Facebook. I found him. I sent him a message. He did not respond. Uh, the other people, Dr. David Brown, I couldn't find any information. That's a very common name, so I don't know if I found him or not. Dr. Denise I also don't know if I found her or not. Uh, Jackson Fenley, I found him on Facebook. I also sent him a message and there was no response. And then below you see CEO OJB Morgan. Uh, she's the person that I've spoken to, that's Joanne. Um, now, interesting enough, look, a lot of us make mistakes. We go to prison, we make mistakes, we come out of prison, we live happily ever after lives, we, we learn from our mistakes, we do the right thing. So it is important. I think it's important to be completely transparent. Um, I know Joanne did go to prison and she's got a few aliases and apparently her actual real name is Winnie Joanne Barefoot. And she's got a few aliases that came up on Pacer from her original criminal indictment. Uh, so she's got Winnie Joe here. We'll actually, we'll, we'll see that in a few minutes. Um, this was a picture, the picture on, I couldn't find many pictures of her. This is unfortunately a mugshot picture of her, which again, no shame in turning your life around after be, being a convicted felon. Complete transparency, I believe, is what's going to help them. If they are going to be able to actually do this, if they are a legitimate company, these are the things that being transparent about up front, everybody's going to find out about this stuff later on. Anybody that's actually going to get involved and want to go on this program is going to start doing their research. And all of this information is public information. Nothing that I'm posting is private or slandering or false information. This is all public information from most of it comes directly from a government website, Pacer. This is her actual indictment from when she got in trouble in 2000. I forgot the year. Uh, so defendant Winnie Joanne Barefoot. Uh, she actually was, she did her time at Alderson Federal Prison. And you can see here, she's got a few names on her. She's got uh, Winnie Joanne Barefoot, which is her real name. Winnie Jo Budzina. Winnie Joanne Kahn. Joanne... Snope Snyder, Olivia Joanne Morgan, and I believe Olivia, uh, Olivia Joanne Barefoot Morgan, which is the name many of us know her from. This is just the second page of her indictment. Shows all of the counts that she had. The one that she looks like she pled guilty to was bank fraud, uh, abetting and or aiding and abetting. And then she had charges that were dismissed. Uh, bank fraud, several charges that were dismissed. I believe... I'm not sure if I put her judgment on here or not. And then also another gentleman that is part of all of this, a guy named uh, Stanbridge, which is first name, Steve, Stephen Stanbridge, who also is part of this. He's not one of the, he's not one, he's not on the director, he's not a, on the board, but he is part of the company. Uh, he's somebody that I've spoken to in great detail. He has a lot of information, so he's 100% representing the company. But it's important, again, to know who you're dealing with. And he also is a convicted felon who I believe might still be on federal probation to some extent. Uh, wire fraud. 
He was sentenced to 60 months imprisonment. He has restitution of 2.7 million. Oh, and Joanne had restitution of, uh, I forgot what her restitution was. It might've been just under a million. Those were all of his charges were wire fraud, false statements to a financial institution. Um, so, you know, it, it, it you should be slightly concerned. Do your homework. You're dealing with people that have had uh, fraud with financial situations in the past that are potentially going to be dealing with maybe millions of dollars. So I'm not saying you shouldn't deal with the company, but definitely do your due diligence before you give anybody any money, obviously. Now, coming to their the person that is actually the lobbyist is a gentleman by the name of Mark Seal. Um, this is his information. I've also spoken in detail with him. He's the person that is... His goal is to get them appointments with decision makers that can actually make this happen, whether it be with the BOP, whether it be with Congress, Department of Justice. And from my understanding right now, uh, Oaks of Justice still needs to come up with around a hundred and something thousand dollars, somewhere between hundred and fifty or hundred and seventy thousand dollars to finish paying Mark Seal, the legislative consultant, to get them an appointment with somebody. And from my understanding, he was going to get them an appointment with, uh, I think he said Jared Kushner's office. This is hearsay. Again, this is what I was told. I don't know if this is factual or not, that Mark Seal is going to get possibly Joanne and her team an appointment with somebody connected to Jared Kushner's office. And they then can decide whether or not this is going to get passed down to the BOP. Uh, I don't know how just because you're going to get an appointment with somebody that that's going to make the BOP say, yes, we want to do it. So my opinion is you could spend a hundred thousand dollars to get this appointment and the BOP could say, go pound dirt. We're not interested. Um, but they're telling me that if they get the appointment that they that they can force them to make this go through, that the, they would call and contact the White House and the White House would force them to do this. I don't know that to be true or not. I am not in politics. I don't claim to be. So I don't know how all of that works. I'm just presenting you with the facts as they've been presented to me. Um, now, there's been some individuals that have done some articles about Oaks of Justice. You may, you all may have heard of a gentleman by the name of Sean Hopwood. He's part of a company called Prison Professors. Uh, they have an amazing reputation. They also do consulting. Sean himself spent time in federal prison for bank robbery, turned his life around. He's helped several people uh, come out of prison better than how they went in. He's helped people have their sentences overturned. So the guy is out there really moving mountains. He seems to believe Oaks of Justice is a con or a scam. This was something he posted on Facebook. And again, I, I am not here to validate whether what Sean posted is true or not. This is just something public information. If you go on Facebook and you just Google Oaks of Justice, you will come across this post. And for those of you that are looking at your phone right now that can't see it, it says, people at several different federal prisons are claiming that Oaks of Justice LLC has a program that uh, that can move people to home confinement, work furlough, or conditional release. Many in federal prison and their families have given Oaks of Justice money, believing it will lead to their early release. But I just finished calling the person who runs Oaks of Justice. The company is run by a former federal prisoner named Winnie Joanne Barefoot, who previously pled guilty to bank fraud in federal court. After speaking with Joanne, I'm convinced this is a complete scam. She was unable to tell me about the person who has been released under her company's program, and she made claims about the Federal Bureau of Prison that simply were untrue. There is no way the Federal Bureau of Prison is going to start releasing people on furloughs to a company run by a former federal prisoner. Please do not send this company money. You will not receive early release. And if someone says something, whether it is a paralegal, lawyer, or company that sounds too good to be true, that's because it probably is. I'm tagging several people here to get the word out through federal prison system uh, before more people in prison and their families are scammed. Please share. Again, I'm not... Uh, advocating what Sean said, and I'm not disencouraging what Sean said. Um, my opinion is Sean is a, a credible source in the industry, and for him to post this, I'm, I'm assuming maybe he got some information from somewhere, or this is just a strong gut feeling that he had. But either way, again, this is just an opinion. This is not fact, so I don't know that to be true or not. Um, we also have, um, unfortunately, they've also been on Ripoff Report, and again, look, Anybody can go post something on Ripoff Report. Uh, you know, I had an I had a severe situation with Ripoff Report with a potential ex-employee posting something that caused a lot of drama between me and other individuals that 
finally just ended recently. Uh, so I all too well understand how easy, easy it is to post something negative on ripoff report. Uh, but again, this is just basically somebody saying um, Oaks of Justice is a scam, buyer beware. Uh, it gives some quotes in here that Oaks of Justice made. Two pages on ripoff report, and you can look at that yourself. Uh, all you got to do is if you go to ripoff report and look up Oaks of Justice, you'll find it on ripoffreport.com, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Uh, these are the contacts that I've spoken to directly. Um, Oaks of Board or uh, Oaks of Justice Board of Directors. We have Winnie Joanne Barefoot, which is the first name listed. That's her actual real name, AKA. And then we have all the AKA names. Uh, the name highlighted in yellow there, AKA Olivia Joanne Barefoot Morgan. That's the name that she goes by on her website. And maybe she's legally changed her name again. I, I don't know that she's breaking any laws or not allowed to do this. To me, it's just something that I feel in the industry that I'm in that I should bring awareness to this. So read it for what it is, take this for what it is. Um, then we have the Caprini, whatever that crazy last name is, Dr. David Brown, Dr. Denise Ribkes, Jackson Fenley. And like I said, I did send a message to uh, Sopran, whatever that name is, and Jackson Fenley on Facebook. There was no response. They did not return my information. They did not return my message. And here's some contact information for Oaks of Justice. If you do want to reach out to them, there's a phone number, multiple email addresses. Um, that contact info, that first number, the 806-893-7362, that's the main number. And then there's a few local numbers. And when I ask them about the local numbers, you'll see there's a local number for Maxwell Montgomery, local one for Forest City, and a local for Coleman and Tallahassee. That's so if inmates need to try to call, they have several numbers set up to where the inmates don't need to pay long distance fees. So that was definitely thinking about the inmates. Not a bad idea. What's going on, Jeff? Thanks for joining me, brother. Um, and then over to the right. We have representing Oaks of Justice. This is Steve Standridge. I've spoken to him several times. Uh, Joanne has actually told me Steve is really running a lot of the show. Um, again, I don't know what Steve's actual title within the company is. Or uh, He said right now he's working for free as a volunteer. Um, again, I'm just going off of hearsay. I'm staring at the camera like you guys can see me. I keep forgetting I'm on a black screen. I've got all my hand gestures going and everything. I look like a fool. Uh, Steve Standridge, his phone number 214-914-9624. That's his email right there, steve at jacksonfenley.com, which I, he did tell me his boss was on the board of directors. So I'm going to take a wild guess and say his boss is Jackson Fenley, uh, being it's the email for Steve is steve at jacksonfenley.com. So I'm assuming that's who his boss is. The legislative consultant, Mark Seal, I've also spoken directly to him. And I did find some information online about him. And apparently he really is a, a legislative consultant. And according to him, he's already received around $30,000. He still needs another $160,000 before he can schedule any appointments. So as of right now, from my understanding, is Oaks of Justice is still raising money to just trying to get an appointment with somebody, I guess, in the BOP or Congress or Department of Justice. So to my understanding, there is no actual appointment, which means there can't be any kind of a, a deal in sight, which means I don't believe at this point, I personally do not believe that they're anywhere near getting anybody released from federal prison onto this program. I honestly believe if this program, and we all hope this program happens, don't get me wrong, I would love to see this happen for so many individuals that would qualify for this. However, I personally believe that if this program will qualify, it's probably going to be, I would say, if it happened in a year, that's really fast. I'm going to guess a year to three years uh, or longer or maybe never even happened at all. It still has, sounds like there's a lot of hurdles and a lot of red tape to go through. And I don't feel there's been complete transparency from the company. Uh, that's why I'm doing this video because of all of the, the, the calls that I'm getting and the emails that I'm getting that somewhat sound like they've been misled. So I'm not saying they were misled direct or uh, directly, but indirectly it is possible. 
And then we have the representing Buddy, B-U-D-D-I, the monitoring company. Uh, and I really, I Googled Buddy. I found the company. It's a legitimate company. Uh, Steve Chapman, who's actually on the website. I've spoken to Steve Chapman. I actually spoke to Steve today. Uh, Steve is the person that he did confirm that they do have a an agreement to have an agreement with Oaks of Justice to where if Oaks of Justice does get this contract with the BOP, that Buddy would be willing to supply the monitoring devices and do some basic monitoring where they would be doing the actual hardware, providing the software. But then if anybody were to uh, have an issue, they notify Oaks of Justice and it's up to Oaks of Justice to take care of the individual. But that's what Buddy does. Buddy has multiple contracts all over the place for individuals that are companies that need to have monitoring devices, whether it be state, local, federal agencies, that's what they do. So of course, I don't think there'd be an issue for them to deal with another company like Oaks of Justice, but even though they're willing to deal with them, I don't think it actually exists right now because there's no approval from anywhere to get these individuals into a program. The program just doesn't exist yet. It's in its, in my opinion, very early conceptual stages. But that's Steve Chapman's Chapman's information. If you guys want to reach out to him, uh, there's his information, contact information, phone number, all of that good stuff. Uh, let's see what else do we got here. Um, Oaks of Justice. Where are we? Okay, so it looks like we've circled through to everything. Uh, many of you know, so let me go ahead and get back to me. There's my beautiful face. So many of you also are aware of Tom Root. Tom Root runs a legal newsletter that goes throughout the Bureau of Prisons. Tom Root also does a lot of work with us in advocating to help individuals with additional halfway house, motions, letters to uh, senators, asking for recommendations, really just doing everything we can to put somebody in the best possible situation. And here is, I just, it's also, I just sent a, message through the, the messaging system here on YouTube. And it's also in a link in the description of the video. But I put a link to two articles that Tom did on my Google Drive. And Tom is not a believer that this is true. He is much more of the sound of mind that this, I would say he has exactly the same belief as Sean Hopwood, to be honest. Um, could you get home confinement with a drug charge? Yes, you could. Uh, depends on the drug charge. I mean, was it a violent drug charge? Was it just, I mean, yes, th theoretically, yes, you could. So if you want to see the articles that Tom posted, I can't show them on the screen because I forgot to upload them in here, but I can read some of it to you. Uh, Tom actually has a quote here from Joanne that says, we have gotten the go-ahead from the White House for the program Morgan said last, or this is what, okay, so let me read that again. We have gotten the go-ahead from the White House uh, for the program, Morgan said last Friday, and we're waiting for acceptance of our protocols by the BOP. Morgan expects BOP approval this week and the first group of 600 prisoners to enter the program in March. That was March of last year. Never happened. Uh, she said two additional groups of 1,000 participants each could enter the program by the end of May. Last month, that didn't happen either. We're almost in July. All the Oaks will be paid by the BOP entering the program is not for people with light wallets or checkered pass. Applicants must be first-time offenders with no detainers, no IFP refused, and have a year clear conduct. Everyone must pay a $200 processing fee, which goes to a third-party processing firm that will verify qualifications. Participants with fewer than 30 months left on their sentence uh, will have to pay no program completion deposit, but those with 31 to 110 months We'll have to pay program deposits of anywhere of $5,000 to $15,000, depending on the time to still serve. The deposit is in their nature of a bond with 90% refunded upon completion. So basically, you can see where Tom's going with this. And if you want to read more about that, go ahead and click on that link. And you can read what Tom's article is in there. And you can read the quote directly from, uh, from Winnie Joanne Barefoot, a.k.a. Olivia Joanne Barefoot. So, what do you guys think about that? Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, new to the room, but I've admired your work. I'm heading in on August 22nd, and thanks to you and your insights, I'm prepared for, t for my time and ready to start my redemption song. Peace to you and all what you do. Awesome. Thank you very much, Cliff. Sorry you got to go to prison, but I'm glad you got a good mind on about it. Um, 
so yeah, so guys, what do you think about this? Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. I think it'd be amazing if they can really pull this off. And I'm not saying they can't. Um, I do have my doubts, as we all should. We, we hear about programs all the... When I was in prison, every day an inmate was coming up to me telling me, this new program, this new program, this new program. Um, I have not personally spoken to anybody that's actually given this company, um, Oaks of Justice, any money. So I don't know that they've collected one dime. Uh, Oaks of Justice has told me they have not collected any money. So I'm taking the word for it at this point. I have not heard differently. If any of you are watching this video and you have any insight to Oaks of Justice or what they may have or may have not done, I would love to hear about it. And... I'm just checking here to see if I missed any calls. I did offer them to come on the show and talk with us to actually speak for themselves. Um, but nobody nobody agreed to. So here I am all alone by myself. But do your homework, guys. Do your due diligence. There's a lot of things that sound too good to be true. And just because it sounds too good to be true doesn't mean it always is. But when individuals are potentially facing a federal prison sentence, we can tend to get a little bit believable, gullible. We really want to believe every good thing that we hear. And this is really what kind of prevents people from doing a lot of the necessary steps. Everybody we talk to hopes for probation. Everybody we talk to has a reason why the judge should give them probation from sob stories to sick family members to having cancer, sick children, sick parents, you name it. We've heard it. And you know, if we've heard it, and we've only been doing this since 2016, guarantee if we've heard it, the judge has definitely heard it a million times. So what you do here and, uh, here and now, between now and the time you actually get sentenced, how you actually start taking accountability for what you did, how you start owning your own situation, not blaming others, not looking for an scapegoat, not trying to build some picture that you're innocent. Even if you're taking a plea deal, a lot of people take a plea, but yet they still try to paint the picture that they were somewhat naive or they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. You got to cut that BS out because that BS is what's going to get you into deeper trouble, possibly a harsher sentence, possibly lose things like cooperation or whatever else you got going on for you, 5K1s, things like that. If you're not sure where to start, you really do want to pick up the phone. My number's on the screen, top of the screen, 509-434-4695. Come check us out on the internet. You can still go to rdapdan.com even though uh, our new website is federalprisontime.com. However, rdapdan.com will continue to point there because so many of you only know me by rdapdan. Uh, so yeah, that's what I got to talk about today. It's hard to trust anything with these pie-in-the-sky programs and the Trump admin is not the most honest administration either. Not sure where I'm headed yet. Yeah, you know, and that's really the attitude you need to have. Until you know what's up, until you get a letter from the marshal's office telling you where to go. And we hear it all the time. People get letters from the marshal's office and they're getting designated to a prison that they didn't think they were going to go to because the judge possibly made a different recommendation. But judges are not experts on sentencing designation. Uh, judges are experts on what they're supposed to be experts on, and it's basically understanding how they should sentence you according to the law and your guidelines and recommendations of PSR and what the prosecutor's got going on, your level of acceptance. That's the issue. Um, government is an honest period. You know, Jeff, you might be 100% onto something there. You could be completely right, but there's a good chance the reason why you're going to prison is you did something that you probably shouldn't have done. You got yourself into a situation that you probably could have avoided. And more than likely, looking back, if you were to make, if you could say to yourself, if I could have done things differently, what would I have done differently? You may not have been in the scope of the government. So, so to say that the government's innocent, never you'd never hear that come out of my mouth. For me to say the government is guilty and that's why I went to prison, that's not the reason I went to prison. Uh, the reason I went to prison is because I was an idiot. I made some mistakes. I turned a blind eye. I justified little what I thought was seemingly unimportant decisions. And I found reasons to make justifications, which ultimately came back to bite me in the ass. So looking at my life now, the things that I do different, uh, like doing my research on companies before I do anything with them. I'm very interested in working with Oaks of Justice if I could get a little bit better feeling for what they're doing. Um, I was going to work with them in the aspect of helping them with the application process, streamlining it, making it more electronic, trackable, putting it into a, a better source of a program just to kind of streamline the whole process to make it easier for the end user and easier to submit. But until I know more, 
I'm staying clear. And I will do videos like this to bring education and awareness and wherewithal and encouraging you to do your own homework, do your due diligence. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Sean Hopward's word for it. Don't take Tom Root's word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Do your own research and come up with your own final verdict. So, fact or fiction is Oaks of Justice legit or not? That's the question that we all want to know. And I'm hoping I get some emails from this. Guys, if you've dealt with Oaks of Justice and you have something that you feel is valuable information that we should be sharing with everybody else, I could promise you there's a good chance anybody going online in the near future Googling Oaks of Justice, this video more than likely will come up. So we can really get some traction here and we can expose the good or the bad wherever it falls. I am neither looking to add weight to making this happen or bringing out and squashing somebody that may be hurting what we're trying to do here. So I'm willing to jump on whatever the truth is, and I hope you guys are with me on that. Um, I'm Ardap Dan, Federal Prison Time Consulting, People Helping People, Communities Method, one day at a time. Shelly's cooking something in the other room, and it smells absolutely amazing. I'm going to go dig in. My kids will be here next week. I'll be doing some videos from the Keys. I'm getting sunburned. My eyebrows have completely turned white. I don't understand. The sun hasn't changed color of anything else, but I look like a damn albino with my eyebrows, guys. It just looks insane. I love every single one of you. You guys have been amazing. 2019 going into 2020 is going to be another awesome year for us guys. And it's all because of viewers like you. <laughs> all right. That's my cheesiness for the day. You guys have a great day. Peace. I love you guys. I really do. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to say it one more time. I love you guys.